If your water softener stops working, it can cost you thousands of dollars to get it replaced, but in this video, I'm gonna show you how to fix it yourself and make it like new in a way that won't cost you any money, it's easy, and you can totally do the job yourself. Water softeners fail due to two problems. The resin inside the tank can go bad, and last year I showed you how to clean these resin beads that are actually inside the system using an inexpensive chemical that makes them like new. But the even more common problem is the salt reservoir itself. This thing can get filled with dirt and debris over the years that clog up the intake drains. And once this happens, your softener will no longer work. So I'm gonna show you how to make this like new yourself. Now my water softener is made by GE. This is an integrated unit. And all that means is I don't have a separate tank and then a container for the salt. It's actually all in one. But this will work exactly the same even if you have a separate unit for the salt. Now to make this job easy, you'll want to have the salt tank as empty as possible. But if it's filled up right now, don't worry about it. It's easy. Just sit back and wait. Don't add any more salt and come back in a few weeks when it's used up and then you can re-watch this video so you understand the next steps. But once your salt reservoir is looking something like this, you're ready to get started. And here's a bonus tip, by letting that salt run down, you might have already helped your system work better because when all that salt is filled up to the top, it can actually form a type of crust that prevents any salt from getting to the bottom. So that's what those little slots are on the side of that cylinder. And even though you can see those drains on the one side of the cylinder, the opposite ones are blocked completely by the salt itself. This stuff is rock hard. It sealed those holes and it's not gonna allow the system to work properly. So we wanna get that stuff out of there to make the thing work like new. You'll need a garden hose and a bucket or any type of a cylinder that can hold some water. And then lastly, I recommend making one of these. You can use any type of a wooden stick, but you should try to round off the end. The reason you're doing this is you're gonna be poking it inside of the water softener and you don't wanna break anything. Now connect up your hose, put the other end into the salt reservoir and turn your water on. Now you don't have to be nervous because everything inside this tank is waterproof, but you're not just gonna spray things off inside, you're actually gonna fill the tank up completely. Now I know it's tempting to point the stream at that salt in the bottom to try to break it up, but the water alone at this point is not gonna do that. So you're gonna fill this thing up all the way, but don't go above the height of your tower inside your tank. And if you're really nervous, just fill the tank up about halfway, but you are gonna need a good amount of water to break up all of that debris. With the tank filled up, you can take a break. You'll wanna wait between two and four hours. And the reason you're waiting is because the water is doing all the work for you. Come back, your water's probably gonna be cloudy like this, and you can go ahead and grab a wooden stick or a long-handled wooden spoon and start pressing on the bottom. You should now feel the salt being completely loose, or you might not feel anything because it might have totally dissolved. Now we've gotta get that salty water out of the tank. Now using a submersible pump like this is the quickest and easiest way to do the job. You can just attach your garden hose to it and lower it right into the tank. Now remember when you're pumping this water out, it's really salty water. So don't pump it around any kind of trees or your plants because that could cause damage. And if you don't wanna spend the money, use a container like this. These giant pretzel containers get the job done fast and they hold about a gallon of water with each dunk. Now it's not important that you get every drop of water out, but you wanna get this thing as low to the bottom as possible. Water level going down, we can finally remove our pump and see the results. Now this is looking great. The sides don't have any kind of residue, and the only salt left is that little bit in the bottom, but that is not what we started out with. That salt can be moved around, it's free, and it will ultimately dissolve when your water softener needs it. This is exactly the result you want, and now the softener can do its job without anything in the way. Now, if you're worried about those little bits, when you actually buy salt from the store, there's often little particles and dirt, and that's all those pieces are, but you can go ahead and spend the time if you wanna scoop them out. If you're wondering if you should get all of that salt out, there's really no reason to. The goal here was to free things up, keep them moving, so that the drains inside the water softener could do their job. All that's left to do is to add some new water softener salt to the tank, and I recommend filling it up about half to three quarters of the way. Don't do it all the way, that might be convenient for you, but all that weight of the salt can actually cause those blockages to happen more often. And when you're done, it's a good idea to trigger one of the regeneration cycles immediately if you can. Most of these units have some type of a button on it to start the cycle, but if not, they're going to be programmed to do it automatically in the next day or two anyway. 
So in about a half an hour, you've got your tank looking like new and more importantly, working like new so we can get access to the salt when it needs it. But if you wanna go a step further, be sure to watch my original video about how to clean inside of your water softener's resin. Use an inexpensive chemical that I show you here and it really can expand this job even further. Now doing these can take a little bit of time, but it doesn't cost a lot. And if it saves you replacing your water softener, you'll be glad you did it. So hopefully you liked this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos coming up.